Alright, welcome back everyone to episode 3 of this uh, whole series. Last time we did a very, very boring mission, in my opinion, where all we did was run north. Um, now we're doing the administration portion again, so if you want to feel free to skip this episode, go ahead. We don't have much to do. Normally I would take care of maintenance, uh, salvaging efforts, and stuff like that. But there's not much to do. I think there's like two or three things I thought of. Uh, first off is something I noticed. I didn't hire any temporary medics, which I really should have done at the last planet, considering we're on a hostile planet. That is a slip on my part, and I do apologize, so I'm just going to bring my medic team to full capacity regardless. Um, the next thing I wanted to do was possibly activate another lance, and I'm just thinking about it. Maybe two mechs as reserves. So I'm thinking maybe just these three. Actually, I could do these four. I'm not act activating the urban mech at all, I know that. Like, uh, I can't believe I'm still doing all these hand gestures while I'm talking. I'm not doing the urban mech at all. That thing is going to get someone killed. That's a last resort mech if I've ever seen one. Vulcan, I'm thinking about giving it a chance. I don't like the fact that it has an AC2 rather than the, like the three additional lasers. I just, I don't like its ranges now because it has amazingly short range. It has mid-range and short-range, and then it has long-range and mid-range. And it's just not enough damage for my liking. I don't know, I could just be stingy. It does have good movement, though. I, you could just use it as a kicker. 583... 696 for 20 tonners. You know what? Yeah. I'll, I'll activate a... Uh, the Vulcan, the Shadowhawk, and these two lights. We'll see how it goes. Activate. Yeah. Oh. Almost messed up already. I'm just starting the video. So we're going to activate all these. Um, they're now activated, so I'm going to assign pilots. I also have to assign the techs for these so they can do their maintenance. So we will start doing that a while. Um, Normally, it doesn't really matter who I pick. So, assign tech. Why is it 75 minutes? Oh, that's why. I always assign different techs to uh, mechs if I can handle it. So it's zero for the first mech that they handle. All right. Do, 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 do. Get his monotonous task done so we can move on and try to get another mission. Also, we're going to be trying, if you remember from the first episode, an uh, event popped up and I believe it said that I get a person for free, so we're going to be testing to see if that is true or not. I've never actually tested it before. Alright, then we need to assign pilots. So, go to personnel. We will have to assign one sergeant. You have dodge, you have ballistic specialization. I'll do this sergeant a while. She will be assigned to... Hmm... Let's put her in the Vulcan. So we have a sergeant in the Vulcan. Man, that six piloting though. I'll put you in the Shadowhawk, and then I'll put two privates in uh, the Stingers. And the privates, it doesn't matter which ones we choose, honestly. So we have a new Lance ready. It will be... Bravo Lance. And we'll go ahead and switch their icon and get everything ready. I don't remember which of these it was. I think it's Greek. Okay, we'll rename it Beta Lance instead. I've heard Bravo, I've heard Beta. I don't think there's really much of a difference, but I want to keep the name and the picture the same. Just because, why not? Da -da 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 -da. 
All right, so we have a sergeant, a corporal, and two privates in a medium lance here. I believe it will count as a medium. Yep, so we have two medium lances ready. Uh, we will assign them to training for now. I don't know if that's actually going to do anything, but they're more or less my reserve if something really bad happens to Alpha Lance. And of course, my financial situation will go up a little bit, but I'm not extremely worried about that. Or at least I think it does. We're making a good bit of profit, too. Alright, so everyone's assigned. They all have techs. I think that's all I had to do besides... Besides checking um, to see if that one thing works. So, I should get a person for free. If my value, if my money down here drops, then I know it doesn't really work and I'll have to add it differently. But I believe I either do the personnel market or something else. I could possibly get a foot platoon pretty cheap. Or I should go to the unit market? No. Higher. So one th what I'm thinking for this is I'll either do a soldier or I will do a vehicle gunner. Possibly. We're just an Aztec. Actually, you know what I will need? I'll need mechanics later, because I will be picking up vehicles, so I will hire a mechanic real quick. Uh, I don't remember if that's a good number or not, but let's go ahead and hire. Oh, it still costs me money. Eh, whatever. I'm not worried about it. Uh, let's see what their rank is, since I cannot remember off the top of my head whether A7 Plus is good or not. They're just a regular. Okay, well that's a little disappointing, but what ifs? We have a mechanic now. The whole point of me getting a mechanic, I already explained this, I know I did, is uh, to disable or disassemble vehicles that we pick up in the future. So, advanced day, it's now Wednesday, July 19th, advanced day, and we'll just do this until we either get a contract or the beginning of the next month. Who is in this? Ultra Green Soldier with a Jump Platoon. Jump Platoons, I hear, are pretty good. I've never used them personally. either in this or in the actual board game. I've not used them in either one, of, unfortunately. So it is the end of the month. We have an update here. Soldier, motorized platoon. And new month. We'll have a special event. The employer... Are you kidding me? Okay. So we have a few people who got experience. We'll have to check and see if these are in the training lances. I don't think they are. Like these are the only two where it's possible for them to be in the training lance. I've gotten experience. That's probably a mech tech. <laughs> Morale is very low now. Why? I didn't do anything yet. This mission doesn't count. All right, we'll get through this step by step. First off, we have these updates. We'll look at those. The special event is Betrayal, which has never happened to me before, but the employer is going to have a minor contract breach. Um, I don't really know what to do about that. And then Diversion. I'm not sure if these are the same, but all battle type roles for the rest of the contract get a negative 5. So I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Usually in Battletech, negatives are a good thing. So I'd like to say it's a good thing. We'll just assume that's good and that's bad. And that they're not the same thing. So, contract market. Won't matter, actually. Uh, let's look at these vehicles, because they're like window shopping. Window shopping is amazing. Let's get airspace first. Hellcat, I don't remember what that is. 60 tonner. It's not bad, in all honesty. Not gonna buy it, but it's not bad. Alright, we don't need to see any more of that. And then we'll just go into these. There are not many mechs. Wow. All that's legal is this wasp. On a side note, I'll probably never buy from the black market. I just, uh, don't care to. Get some vedettes here. Or vedettes, rather. That's how you pronounce it. 
And in my other games, I use these as my mainstay. It's either these or scorpions. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's either these or scorpions I use. For now, I think we'll just leave these. What's a hunter light support? Alarm 20. Flamer. 35 tons. That's not bad. 12 salvos. Alright, so that's that. Now for a month of possibly boring waiting. Also, we didn't even check. So Tiffany and the Corporal are here. And they did get experience. I'm not sure if that was a random roller because they're in the training again, but... Eh, it's whatevs. Back to the briefing room. For more waiting. Yay, waiting. I'm not even worrying about the personnel markets normally. I would just like a contract, if that is possible. Maybe... Now I'm thinking about it. Maybe the negative five makes it so I don't get a contract or a mission as often. Enemy morale dropped. Treachery. Bad information from the employer. Next enemy morale roll gets a plus one. Player minor contract breach. They... I do not like the people who employed me for this assault. Like, I know it says Lyran Commonwealth, but I, have a, I assume it's a specific commander. Alright, we got a few people who have gotten XP, which is good. We're still getting paid, but most of our money should come from salvage. I need those missions. Come on, game. Give me those missions. Oh, hey, there's a Victor on sale. I've never seen one of those on sale before. Not going to buy any of this, of course, because we're just starting out and we only have a little bit of money. Commando, which is one of the things I wish I had started with, but I didn't. Not buying it for 105%. 80% for a Warhammer. Seems like a pretty good deal. Alright, well, there's some nice looking mechs, but uh, nothing I'm going to buy, unfortunately. So, we are going through September now. When is the end of my contract? I don't remember. 3021 in March. Okay. March? March. Okay, I can't help myself sometimes. So we have a wasp pilot who's looking for a job, and she is a uh, regular. Uh, she even comes with an ability, blind fighter, which deals with sensors, which I don't know if sensors are in play in this campaign. I don't remember. I've never used them in uh, the actual Battletech game, but we'll see either way. I don't need a wasp pilot. I have enough lights as is. Personnel market update. No one. All right. What is this? I have never seen anything like that before. Capellan Confederation media reports that mercenaries have attacked Truth and butchered the population. Jesus. Initial estimates indicate that as many as 50,000 people were killed, some dragged from their homes and executed, others fired on by mercenary battle mechs as they fled. So far, there have been no res official response from the Capellan government. Comstar has denounced the mercenaries and branded them rogue. So that's cool that there's little events built into this. I did not know. Where is the world of truth? Truth is about midway down, close to the Federated Sun's border. Man, so that's a, another kick in the teeth. Not only was there a massacre here again, but there weren't many people beforehand. That is... Man, I feel bad for that world. These people should really just move if they could. Oh well. 
back to our concerns all the way on the other side of the galaxy. Personnel market update. Mech warrior and an urban mech. Oh, do you want to die? You're green. Ultra green, sorry. 7 plus, 7 plus. You're in an Irby. You have, like, no hope. I'm sorry. Even if it was cheap. You have no hope whatsoever. Alright, October has come around. Unfortunately, we still have not gotten another contract. There will be a big battle this month. Oh, this will be a good one. Although I am nervous. The last big battle I had was... Oh, it was so huge. It was... Two of my lances, an enemy lance, eight civilian vehicles on my side, and I think like 12 to 16 on the enemy side, and I had to slaughter either the enemy battle mechs, which there was only three of them, or all the enemy vehicles. And it was really fun, but I believe I lost one mech. Oh no, it wasn't, it wasn't even mine, it was an allied mech. Right, I had like two allied mechs. Lost like a centurion or something. Something small that doesn't really matter. Alright, they're still at route morale, which is good. Even though, you know, I haven't done anything. In the unit market, we have a whole bunch of stuff that is above cost and I'm not interested in. Aerospace? Not interested. Alright. So, about midway through October, or late October, we should have this mission pop up. Because it's a larger mission, I may wish to activate some of my heavier units, like the Riflemen. I don't think we'll have a need of a King Crab unless it's an urban setting. Well, they'll be on standby right now. We'll see the setting that we'll be in. Oh, hey, we have another little bit of news. New Wessex suffers collateral damage during a Lyran raid. Uh-oh. New Wessex is the latest casualty of the war between the Draconis Combine and the Laren Commonwealth. During an orbital battle earlier this year, the LCS, LCS standing for, honestly, I don't know, the LCS St. Brendan, 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 I'll go with Brendan, entered the atmosphere, so this is a ship, and suffered a catastrophic engine containment failure. The resulting explosion rained tons of radioactive debris across Jericasa. Jericasa? Jericasa. Reports are still coming in from... And, oh. <laughs> Messing up on the reading. Reports are still coming in, and medical professionals and scientists are preparing for an increase in cancer and radiation exposure symptoms of in calculable levels. So New Wessex is going to have a bad couple of years. That's for sure. It's probably also an understatement. Larian Alliance... Larian Alliance? Larian Alliance doesn't exist yet. Alright, we'll just say it's Larian Commonwealth. Founds New War College. The Laren Alliance welcomes the first class to be enrolled in the War College of Buna on Fort Buna. Okay. The grueling schedule includes not only combat skills as well as academic studies, but also technical and logistics management courses, which is actually a pretty smart idea for officers. The intent is to produce officers, like I just said, who are knowledgeable in all aspects of war. A very good idea, so you don't have stupid soldiers. Or officers, rather, who's going to be leading soldiers anyways. Only time will tell if these students will live up to the high expectations of the LAAF commanders. I have a feeling these don't actually do anything, but, you know, it's good to have a little bit of hello, beautiful pirates free-for-all. Alright, we're going to be in mountains on a fairly large map in the day. It's clear there's a moderate gale, so missile and ballistic weapons will suffer. When are we deploying? On the 22nd? We have a little bit of time. We have uh, six more days. <laughs> Thanks, Vest. Go away. I don't like you. You're very annoying. 
You tell me that all the time, and it's not true. Alright, so. Special conditions. Six, or, yeah, 12 mechs designated enemy deploy at the north. 12 mechs designated pirate deploy at the south. I deploy in the middle. These guys are not allied, so I'm going to be outnumbered. Must destroy 50% of both forces while keeping 50% of own alive. Winner controls the battle. Here's where I'm getting my salvage from. Ooh, hoo, hoo. Attach allies. So to start off with, we have a trebuchet, centurion, hunchback, and shadowhawk. Which means I might only need to deploy one of my lances. Although I cannot control these guys, really. Hmm. How I normally handle attached allies is like this. I'll either load up a second game window and take control of one, which, in that case, I take responsibility for their actions, and if they are destroyed, it will result in minor contract breaches for myself. If I do not control them, I do not take responsibility if they get destroyed, because let's be honest, they'll get themselves killed in stupid ways. Dear God, look at all those mechs. Look at those skill levels, too. These are supposed to be regulars, and they have like a bloody 2-3, 3, 3, 3, 3. And then the normal regulars. Well, even these guys are considered veteran. I might have to deploy my entire company, in all honesty. Because I already have a preemptive plan, I need to, if I'm deploying the middle, I need to deploy off to one side, see where most of their forces are, cons um, where they consolidate, run away from that, let them kill each other, and then I'll move in and mop up. The only problem with that idea is I don't have amazing mechs, and they have way too good of pilots. 3-2. <laughs> Never knock him over. I blow out a gyro. Could probably re-roll the moderate gale. See how it works out. This can be a rough battle, everyone. Making sure this is still going. Okay. So let's start. We already have our little mini plan already. This is not going to be an easy mission at all. It's a big enough map, but it's not going to be an easy mission. How many are they deploying each? So they're both deploying a whole company. For the sake of testing, let's just say we deploy Alpha Lance. Will that change the enemy numbers? I have a feeling it will. No, it doesn't even change their skill level. I guess it's all set. Well, second mission. I'm going to be deploying my whole company. Let's get to it. Hangar. God, I don't want to deploy the urban mech. I'm not deploying the urban mech. That's. I'm just going to get someone killed if I do that. Ah, and we're in mountains. How useful would the king crab honestly be in a mountain? Not very is the correct answer to that. So we'll activate the rifleman. We'll activate... I know I could activate these faster if I actually choose someone who had enough time, but I'm not worried about it. What are the Whitworth? Pass a day. Those are activated. We'll have to deploy Bravo Lance. Now then, we have to deploy all these guys. So our last two techs will work on these two. Do, 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 do. There it is. And then we will have to assign pilots. Gertrude, my captain, has ex uh, is better with missile weapons, so I might put her in the Whitworth. The other person will be in this, and we'll see how it works. Other person being the one with a ballistic specialization. We'll see how that works. It's better than putting a novice in there, because at worst... Let's actually take a look. 
I'll be doing a three gunnery with AC5s, I'll be doing a five gunnery with lasers. If I just chose this person, I'd be doing five across the board, so. We'll just see how that works out for us. You go ahead and get in the Rifleman. You go ahead and get in the Whitworth. Um, I guess we'll make a half lance or something. Add new force. Temp. Units. Oh, you can make sub forces. That's pretty cool. That's not what I wanted to do. Force. Okay. I wanted to shove the main force under this as the uh, temp unit. Do, 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 do. A new force, temp unit. There we go. And the temp unit will just have our two units. I could make a Charlie Lance and just have them do everything, but can't deploy the force because I only have two people there. Just deploy them individually, I believe. Or not. Hmm. Let's go ahead and remove him and add him to the temp unit. See if this works out for us. And then we will Ah, there it is. Deploy force to the big battle. And we can't deploy them. Why can we not deploy them? If I sign into fight. Can I deploy them now? No. Oh, there might be a a unit limit on here. Possibly, maybe, maybe not, maybe not. Max of five deploy units. I don't know, I could I could just filter these guys into the other lances. Or just leave them out entirely and use the uh the guys I was given. Leave the temp unit there for now. Add unit, we're adding the locust. We'll add a Whitworth, and we'll add Man. Does that allow me to deploy everyone? Yes. Although they're not Lance now, they're more of a star, which is not a standard formation, but it is what evs, I believe. Did I lose my allies for doing that? I did. Hmm. That's, I know I'm messing around a lot with this, but I'm trying to figure out what I'm actually going to be doing. Undeploy all our people. We need to undeploy a locust. Alright, so we're deploying you, and deploying you now. Briefing room, those are the same. I now have a heavyweight unit. And that removes my allies again. So, uh, we'd be using all of ours to fight theirs. You know what? I'll accept all responsibility and just use only my units. I won't worry about allied units. It's a lot easier to use allied units because I won't lose a lot. Uh, funds wise, but I'm not worried about it. We'll have a total of 10 people. Uh, lore wise, we will have our other two on Overwatch. So that'd be our Irby Mech and our King Crab. And we will see what happens.
Let's check one more time to see enemy forces. Like, these are all battle mechs. Like, we could get very lucky if we can just cripple a few of them. And either A, use their parts, or B... Uh, repair them. Lost a train of thought there. I was thinking about stripping down some mechs real quick and uh, actually getting the replacement parts for them. So they have a 3N rifleman. 3N, that's what I have, right? Yeah. So our, the whole idea of this battle is we are outgunned by both of these. We will try to avoid them as best as possible and let them hit each other. So we might get involved closer to like turn 10 to 15. I have a feeling this can take like 30 to 50 turns. It's going to be a very long fight. But man, that 70% uh, with winning and two companies worth of mechs is going to be pretty good. Also, on a side note, since I'm just kind of rambling at this point before we advance time, the victory conditions I might actually change, I, I have two ways of doing this. I can either A, stop when I fulfill the victory conditions or any time after that, or B, go until the very end. I'll make that call on the field, but I feel like I should uh, say that up front. I will make a save here. Alright, so today is now the 22nd. We are ready to start. So in the next episode, expect like 30 minutes to a couple hours of this one fight because it is going to be massive. Roughly three companies in combat. I'll see you then.